So I'm looking at Circle 1 here. We've got a variety of radish and other things here. The intention here is to grow some food for us and let the rest go to the animals so that we can have the animals forage the tops and we can have the bottom. I've been looking at my water test results again. They're over a year old as well as that of a neighbor. Thought I'd just mention just a few things. I'm no expert, but there's a few things that you can consider when you look at your water test results and a few things that you can definitely work with. Now in most of the wells, most of the boreholes in, in our area, sodium and chloride, which is the two parts of table salt, sodium chloride uh, in ACL, it's a little bit higher sometimes, sometimes it's a lot higher than we'd want, but it is something that can be managed if you know how to deal with it. Uh, there's a few caveats there, it can be bad for your soil, so instead of actually panicking about your water, we should probably consider what's in the water, consider that most of these elements, most of these things are nutrients and necessary in some small amount to plants and humans and animals, but when there's an excess of them, when, there's, when it exceeds the limit, it's obviously not great. So I just want to go over these things quickly and then see how we can look at them more positively. Maybe that helps someone out there. Okay, this is almost two years of scaling, so it's not as bad. But that is calcium carbonate. And it's not the same as the calcium parameter on your water test that is calcium carbonate is something separate to that and uh, the scaling is mostly due to that and there's perhaps a few things we can look at here to do that I'm going to try for people with high iron content you'll see the iron oxidizes becomes rust basically so it combines with the oxygen becomes brown we don't really have a lot of iron here if I remember correctly my iron count is 0.1 milligram and then, um, of course, there's other small ma uh, macron micronutrients like boron and copper and zinc that are in such small amounts that they're actually good for us, good for the plants. They're actually nutrients and they're good for the animals, especially the goats who need a good supply of copper. So the key issues that were highlighted in our water was basically the, the sodium levels and a little bit higher chloride. I've got my a little five-in-one test kit here. Um, this is not comprehensive, this thing can test uh, electrical conductivity, totally, total dissolved solids, pH and salt, um, specific gravity and so on, but I'm really just interested to see the pH and the salt. Here I just want to look at how we can change pH today to see if we can start by working a little bit on the calcium carbonate thing there and actually uh, I'll tell you what that does and what we're going to do here because the issue with sodium is over time you keep adding you keep irrigating with it and it essentially starts building up in your soil to the point where you affect your soil structure the permeability uh, also can affect your uh, what do you call it your osmosis that the, the way that the plants take up water because once your salt level outside of the root becomes higher than it is inside the root essentially the water is not going to want to travel by osmosis into the root it's going to want to travel out and then you're going to start seeing leaf burn and all kinds of issues now you may already be aware of the fact from our previous videos that we've been drinking and cooking and making great coffee with uh, purified and filtered rainwater that is our solution to the boral water having high sodium but that does not solve the issue with getting the stuff irrigated and into the soil. So to make that work for us, we have to keep in mind that the more we irrigate, the more sodium and chloride we're putting into the soil. Now, one of the things that we can do and that I like doing is to work with gypsum. Gypsum is compatible with most soils here in our area, the clays. It actually, over time, over a long period, it increases the, the soil structure quite a bit actually helps to get the clay soil into more granular uh, structure but it also displaces sodium ions from the soil so when you get rains and so uh, so when you get rains the sodium ions are displaced and moved out and leached out easier 
um, this is quite useful. Uh, to an extent it also works for chloride as far as I understand. Gypsum is natural, uh, just make sure that you get the nice agricultural grade stuff that's very fine and uh, I think yeah, I think the dosage is anywhere from one to five kilograms per 10 square meters depending on the severity of your soil damage. For what I've got here it's more of a preventative thing. I apply about 10 to 15 kilograms on the crop circle here behind me which is about 200 square meters so I just keep adding a thin bit, a thin bit just work it into the top layer of topsoil and then uh, Max is not happy, I don't know why that is uh, one way of dealing with this the other one of course is to use salt tolerant crops or salt removing crops things that can grow accept the salt and then when you cut them off you can remove the salt from the area right here I've got uh, my little 5-in-1 test here it is calibrated which I do with the buffers that I've got at home I do keep some distilled water here to rinse it off with keep the electrodes clean keep them reliable and in here I've got 5% strength acetic acid that is nothing other than vinegar this is vinegar there's other acids that we can use for what we're going to do today like hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid and all of them break down into something that's usable and, and, and nutrient to the soil but acetic acid is the easiest to come by, very cheap we can buy these in big barrels for not a lot of money and I'll tell you now how we're going to use this vinegar, so if you don't put this on your fish and chips you can also use this in your soil at strength like this you can use it as a herbicide natural herbicide but we don't want to do that that's the last thing we're going to do is herbicide here it's going to drop the pH it's going to help with scaling it's going to help with managing the carbon uh, the calcium carbonate so that whole picture there is already a huge plus for me it won't do anything for sodium but if I can start with the pH and the calcium carbonate, we can deal with the sodium later. So just coincidentally, I'm going to use a bucket that was a gypsum bucket. We'll rinse it out. I think it's going to be best to take water from here. Because then we'll get some backflow from the pipe. And this is the water that was most recently pumped. Be the freshest. So let's just first rinse this bucket. then get five liters it's not full to the brim it's close enough to five liters good enough for the test Raise the electrodes a little bit so we're going to do a little bit of a test on the standard well water um, I'll leave, it, leave it in there for a, a few seconds Okay, our pH is actually not that high it is 6.8 ish mm -hmm. so we're going to be adding one milliliter of the vinegar per liter so five moles in there and see how that affects the pH so okay let's say 6.75 five moles so that's about five milliliters of vinegar Contaminating it a bit. Let's see. Mode pH. Okay, dropped slightly to 6.57. So it seems that we might have to do two moles. So another five would be two milliliters per liter. And that brings the pH down to 6.45. And like I said, what will happen now is the vinegar, the acetic acid, will react with the calcium carbonate as well and form the calcium acetate, which is easier to deal with and will have less scaling problems. So maybe we will try that, maybe we'll add 
25 liters of acetic acid to the tanks to a 2500 liter tank irrigate to that a bit and see what happens uh, the pH is a little bit lower I think it's actually going to be better for the plants anything higher than that is going to affect the taste for the animals and probably start becoming a little bit antimicrobial which is not good for the soil it's good for the tank but not for the soil